Hello everybody and happy Friday. It has been a long week and I am really looking forward to the weekend. But is it really the weekend? I mean, this whole seven day week system is kind of arbitrary. We just made it up, right? I mean, you've got the day that's, you know, the period that it takes for the earth to spin around and then you've got the years based on axial tilt and stuff like that, but there's no association with weeks. False, it's actually someone associated with the moon, which you may already know because you're better educated and better looking than I am. Apparently ancient Babylonians would celebrate a holy day on the new moon pictured here and then on the day of the first visible crescent, which was seven days later. Unfortunately, this didn't work out too well for them because the lunar calendar isn't a perfect multiple of seven days, so they just kind of had to keep throwing extra days in there to make it work. Anyway, that's how we got our seven days, and then later we decided we had to name those days so we knew which nights to go out drinking. But I don't want to talk about that today. I want to talk about a different unit, hours, because hours are freaking weird. So a long time ago in a galaxy very, very nearby, in fact, this very galaxy, some people decided, let's split up the daylight into some reasonable chunks, and they decided decided on a nice even number 10. We'll have 10 hours. Why not call them hours? Because that's a thing. But then there was some time when they weren't quite sure. It's kind of dark, kind of light. I don't know if we should consider this part of the daytime. So they said, well, we'll give an hour of like boot up time and an hour of shutdown time. We'll make it 12 hours. There's another problem though, in that they were measuring the apparent daylight. So when it seemed to be bright. And as those of us who are sad around Christmas time know, that's not a consistent unit of measure. So for a long while, an hour was just a 12th of the daylight, however long that happened to be that day. But eventually hours got clingy and sat us down and wanted to have a talk and said, listen, I just, I, I need to know where we stand. And we said, all right, all right, all right. Um, Look, there are, we've got roughly half daylight and half darkness in a given day, right? Right? And we've been using roughly 12 of you in the daytime. So let's just say there are 24 hours in a given day. So from, from noon to noon, and that'll be your thing. You can be the exact same length. You don't have to be jealous of those nighttime hours getting to be extra long in the winter and stuff. It'll be all cool. But hours still weren't entirely happy, so we invented mechanical clocks because when a relationship is going sour, add some bling. It works about as frequently as a stopped clock. But of course, after we made all those clocks, we had to set them to some particular time. So we just decided that noon is going to be when the sun is directly overhead, longitudinally speaking. But that's not consistent from place to place. So for a long time, we had a different time in just about every city. And since Brooklyn didn't become part of New York City until 1898, and it is right over there, they are 0.05 longitudinal degrees to the east of us, which means that their noon was 13 seconds before noon in Manhattan. I did the math. Now this largely wasn't a problem because there wasn't much interaction between cities and many people didn't travel particularly far. I'm fairly certain that several of my ancestors never got out past their outhouse. But that changed when the railroad started because you can't really go from city to city and try and keep track of what time this city thinks it happens to be right now. And in the United States this was a mess because every train company decided we are going to have one time, this is the time that we are operating by, even though they would sometimes go to the same station. And so some stations would have multiple clocks set to completely divergent times so that you could try and guess what time your particular train thought it happened to be, and thus when it might arrive. And then because everybody kept missing their trains, they said, okay, you know what, enough is enough. Why don't we say that there are four time zones in the United States and they're separated by an hour and we'll kind of divide it based on a particular hub station. And to a large extent, cities decided, why don't we just set our clocks to that whole railroad time people are talking about? That'd be good. Though to be fair, they did a pretty bad job of this. This is a map of what the time zones looked like in 1913. That, what? Well, it doesn't make any sense. And so in 1918, Congress was like, Americans, stop being idiots. We're going to adopt some reasonable rules. And that gave us the time zones that we have in the United States today. But here's the problem I have with this. When the railroads happened, we decided you can't just have a personal time anymore. When I say the train will be here at 2 p.m., you're supposed to be able to know what that means. But now we're traveling and interacting a little bit more than we used to when we just had trains. And we have that problem on the internet now. If someone says, I'll be doing something at 2 p.m., I have no idea what time they mean. And even if they put the time code in there, then you've got to do the calculation in your head and just hope that you did it in the right direction so you don't end up two hours late for something. I think that maybe, just maybe, time zones have outgrown their usefulness. We have a psychological idea of, well, you work from nine to five, but you could just as easily get used to working from six to two if you had a few days to think about it. So I am trying an experiment. I have set all my clocks to UTC, a universal time, and it is already one in the morning here. And strangely enough, I still feel like I got plenty of time. Have an awesome weekend and I'll see you on Monday. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget, I'm going to be doing a live stream with Mari Voiles and Jeff Fu from Reckless Eating at 7 p.m. UTC on Saturday. So be there, ask some questions, 
party it up. It'll be a fun time. I will see you guys soon. Bye.